thing that is important is where those lines are originating from. Because we want to make sure that we're not manually creating all of these and instead we're using components to minimize our sources of truth so that we can easily create and update these prototyping connections. Now the way that I do that is by identifying opportunities to create what I call switchboards. Now a switchboard is any main component that has been intentionally pulled out of a chunk of UI so as to function as a single place to control all of the prototyping connections. Now as you can see I have two different ways that I've set up the prototypes for these two flows. And obviously these are pretty simplistic so you can imagine that these flows might be 10 or 15 different options for instance. But the general idea is that in this top flow, I'm controlling each connection individually. That means that in here, I have specifically said page two points here. And then on this page, I say page one points back here. And you can see there's a lot of lines happening and each one is its own source of truth. And that's where you can run into issues because if I'm adding a bunch more pages or heaven forbid, I realize that actually this component needs to change and maybe I'm reordering things or thinking about flows a little bit differently. All of a sudden, I might find myself in a situation where I have to update all of these prototyping connections one by one and that is a total waste of time. Instead, if I'm in a situation where I know that I'm going to create some kind of a prototype connection between three pages that all share a single navigational element, that is the perfect opportunity where I'll take that component, pull it out of the UI like I've done here, and then use that component to dictate all of my prototyping connections. In that way, if things change, I have one place to update the UI, but I also have one place to point to the relevant screens as well. It's a great way to save time and I highly recommend doing it whenever possible. Now for this lesson, there's a lot of frames that are going to go on. So I've actually created a little example file right here and we're going to walk through four different ways that I use switchboards. Now in this first example, it's similar to what I just showed you only using real UI. What I've done is pulled out this sub nav here that you can see in my sidebar. And that way I have one place where I can control these prototyping connections and I automatically get that baked in to each instance of the sidebar. So if I hop into prototype mode, you can see how that works here, where these are actually individual components that I'm importing from my UI kit because they have these baked in hover states using interactive components. But I still want to make sure that I'm creating a new main component that represents this complete sub nav so that I have one place to dictate all of these interactions. And as things evolve, I have a single source of truth to make those changes. Now, the second example is showing how I can actually use entire layouts as switchboards. And again, the other benefit of that is that I now have one place to make updates for my UI as well. In this example, I was playing with what it would look like to have hover interactions reveal more information about each of these individual people. Now, I've hidden the other columns in here for simplicity, but you'll get the idea where I'm able to have one place to control this interaction in here so that each time I duplicate this artboard to override this information about each individual person, I'm not also increasing my source of truth for this prototype itself by one. If I didn't have my switchboard over here and I would come over here and duplicate this and say this is roster five then I would have to go back and select each fifth row and create a new prototype connection to drag it over to that new frame and that problem only compounds over time.